Welcome for those of you who are here live, for those of you who will be joining in the replay, this is Sonia Miller, and this is Five Reasons Smart Women Settle for Less and the Small Shifts That Bring Big Abundance. So this is part of a six-part mini training that I have been offering as a gift for anyone who needs this message not just smart women, but all genders who resonate with this topic. It's my New Year's kickoff. And it's also a preview for a, a brand new program that's starting January 31 called Thrive Generously, Live and Lead from Your Natural Abundance. I'm very excited about the opportunity to share these, this brand new material and really give you these pieces of wisdom, the small shifts that truly can bring big abundance. So if you'd like to get the replay, I'll be letting you know where we can do that. And we're going to just jump right into today's reason number three. So again, as you are arriving here, please say hello. Let me know where you're calling from and welcome. <clears throat> All right. So today we are covering reason number three, why smart women settle for less. And it is, you don't believe you're capable. So if that feels like you, if you ever struggle with feeling incapable, um, you're gonna have lots of good stuff to take in, digest, explore for yourself today. And the thing I really am passionate about is helping you understand how when you feel incapable, there's a direct connection between that feeling or that belief and your capacity to receive more abundance, more fulfillment. And very unconsciously, we don't realize that it actually causes us to settle for less. So it isn't just that there isn't more to be had, but there's actually something happening in your consciousness that's causing you to settle when this belief that you're not capable or this fear that you're not capable at, is at play. So today we are going to be exploring this very idea, which is that your ideas and beliefs about what it means and what is required to be capable is really what is causing you to settle for less, your ideas and beliefs about it, rather than I am incapable or I'm afraid I'm incapable. It's your ideas and beliefs about what being capable means and what is required to be capable. So if you are um, new to me, um, you can get all of the replays and the handouts, the slides and the handouts for this whole training at surpassyourlimits.com forward slash five reasons. And I apologize, but I didn't get the handout for today's training complete, but it will be available um, a little later, probably today, definitely by tomorrow. If you want to print that out and follow along, there's prompts that follow the slides and places that you can take down notes to really integrate whatever you learn here and become curious about. So let's see anybody else. Okay, great. So make sure I didn't miss anyone. So if you have questions throughout the training, comments, please post them in the chat. I will be checking periodically to see if I can answer any questions live. And then you can always come back and post your questions in the replay. So today we're going to explore, one, what you believe it means to be capable. Number two, the small shift that brings big abundance. Number three, the non-negotiable requirement to stop settling. The fourth thing is the missing asset, missing asset number three, to thrive generously. Real life examples of how this shift supports you to thrive generously. And I'm going to give you a practice in a presence practice or an awareness practice and a writing prompt. All right, so let's start with this. What does being capable mean to you? So take a little time now to shift gears and stay in this place of being curious and contemplative about the ideas and beliefs you have about what it means to be capable. So this right here is directly from the dictionary. Capable. It's an adjective and it means having power and ability, efficient and competent. So this idea of being capable and what it means to be capable um, if it goes unchallenged, 
um, you're going to be operating from just some basic presuppositions about what it means to be capable. But a lot of people don't actually take a moment to ask themselves, well, what does this actually mean? And when you start exploring this today, you might discover, wow, I really do have some incorrect ideas about what it means to be capable, some missing information about what it means. And this is something that if you go back to the very first training, which is an overview for this whole training, you'll see how important it is to become aware of where there's missing information and incorrect information, because whatever you believe, whatever's in your consciousness about being or feeling capable, you will create from that reality because your consciousness creates your reality. So here we illuminate what's going on in consciousness and then bring into your awareness much more empowering ways of relating to these unconscious beliefs that control us and limit us and cause us to settle. So I'm here to say that you might have some confusion about what it means. You might have some incorrect information about what it means. And as we really unpack this, you'll see that there's been a lot of mixed messages that you might not even be aware of that cause you to settle for less. So as a way to kind of open up your awareness, I'm going to just give you some questions and feel free to just, you know, check these off, make a little scratch mark every time one of these resonate is true for you. Um, if you're listening to the replay, you might even want to print out these slides or take a snapshot of this and you can, and then connect the dots. Okay, so for each one of these, just take a moment and answer for yourself, what do you believe? Do I believe this or not? Even if it's a little bit. So when it comes to feeling capable or being capable, I should be efficient. Mistakes are a sign of incompetence. I should be able to figure it out on my own. I need more training, degrees, or experience in order to be capable. I shouldn't need help. I need to believe in myself more. If I feel insecure, it means I'm not capable. I don't want to be needy. Needing support is a sign of weakness. Fierce independence is a sign of strength. There is no support available. And finally, is there anything else? Is there a belief about being capable that maybe I didn't mention here that you'd like to put in the chat and share with me? It's really good to start asking questions like, what do I believe about being capable? Okay. So I hope this is starting to awaken some awarenesses. And the point I really want to make today is whatever you believe about being capable, these ideas and beliefs are learned. They're not absolutes. They are learned, and they are learned based on our environment, the messages that we got. Again, back to the very first training we talked about, this is a very important core principle for this whole training is we are products of our environment. And if we have um, beliefs that we live our life by and they go unchallenged, then we are absolutely going to limit what we're able to receive into our lives. So we are products of our environment. Go back to the first training if you don't know what I'm talking about so that you can really start to see what messages did I get through my gender, through my culture, through my home environment, through my this time in history, um, whatever it is that have informed my sense of what it means to be capable and what is required to receive abundance to receive fulfillment, to experience fulfillment in my life. So with that, I want to illuminate what is for smart women, for accomplished professional women, the incorrect and missing information 
that will absolutely cause you to settle for less because of how you regard your feelings or your beliefs about being capable. And it is this, when you get your sense, sorry for the typo, of when you get your sense of value from your productivity versus your presence, anything that interferes with your productivity will cause you to feel less capable. When you get your sense of value from your productivity versus your presence, in other words, versus simply who you are as a human being, anything that interferes with your productivity will cause you to feel less capable. So earlier on in this training, very first overview, I talked about the doing model of power and the being model of power. And that smart women and accomplished professional women tend to over rely on a doing model of power, which values productivity and their being model of power, which values their presence, their humanity goes malnourished. And this is because we are products of our environment. So we've gotten incorrect information about where our sense of value comes from, our sense of power comes from, our self-worth comes from, and we are also missing information because when you look at things through the human doing lens and the human being lens is malnourished, what happens is you start to have an internalized bias, which means doing is good. Not doing is bad. So here's the thing to know. Not doing, the absence of doing does not equal the power of being. Let me say that again. This is a really important concept. And when I got it, it transformed my life, my work, my world. And this is what happens for for students and clients who start to get this concept. Even if you understand that there's a doing way of being and a being way of being as depicted in the yin yang and all of the polarities of life, there's duality, all right? Even if you get that idea and you realize, well, you know, I need to stop doing so much and I need to maybe start being. Maybe you've already gotten that idea. And so maybe you're over-functioning and you're overworking and you um, are feeling the cost of that. And you're wanting to balance, to have more work-life balance, right? What tends to happen is when your doing has been overvalued, okay, lots of attention and validation and compensation and pats on the back and you're so good and your sense of value gets validated from what you do or what you accomplish or the outcomes you produce. When all of that has gotten so much validation and this being part hasn't, this doing validation becomes the lens through which you see all of life. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you actually know the value and the power of being. You just know doing and not doing. So let's say you're doing, 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 and you say, well, I need to stop overdoing and I'm going to just, you know, start, start, start stopping. I'm going to stop the, stop the overdoing. What tends to happen is we stop the doing, but then we feel lost. Then we feel feelings. Then we don't, the, 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 I see this happen all the time. The natural question is, well, if I'm not doing, what do I do? What do I do with myself? There's not a language or a lens or perception of, well, how could not doing ever be valuable? How could not doing ever produce results? How could not doing be a good thing? Because when I stop doing, I don't feel good. I don't know what to do. I feel lost. Well, that's because this being model of power, this being value needs to be nurtured and nourished because it's gone malnourished. Okay. So the absence of doing 
does not equal the power of being. The power of being is its own thing. And this world of being is where fulfillment comes from. It's where you access the natural abundance that lives in you and lives in the world that's all around us all the time. And yet, if there's missing information, it's just a big, I don't know, right? So that's what I'm here to illuminate is what is this power of being? All right. So with that, here's where we're going to illuminate some of the stuff that you might not be aware of, okay? The hunter is the symbol for the doer. And when we define being capable through the doing model, back to, I'm even going to hop back to this, let's see, definition, capable, having power and ability, efficient and competent, ability, efficient and competent, right? When you go back to the hunter, the hunter is capable and can, can, can have a uh, results and outcomes and even abundance when it is highly efficient and focused and self-sufficient. The less the hunter needs and the, the more it is able to zero in, focus, and go after the target and receive what it wants, okay? That's that lens, right? However, in the being model of power, the opposite is true. There's room for needs and wants and preferences and support. And that, like the tree that receives support from all of life, receives all kinds of abundance that is already here when you know how to harness the power of being. So this African proverb, I love it because it just captures it so beautifully. If you want to go fast, go alone, efficient. Efficient, efficient, efficient. I don't need anything. I don't need anyone. I just need what I can carry in my backpack with my arrow and my um, my basic minimum food supplies. And it's just me and I don't have to think about anybody else. Really efficient. I can go fast. I can make things happen. I'm efficient. That's the doing model of power. If you want to go far, go together. This now opens us up to support, community. There is room for you to have an off day because you're not the only one that you're relying upon. When we're operating as human doings, this is about connection, support. It's okay about, it's okay to have needs and feelings and vulnerabilities, all right? Because you're not the sole provider, you can rely on support. But when you've operated as a human doing, and that's been overdeveloped, we have all kinds of beliefs and ideas about support. So with that, let's talk about what the cost is when you believe that you have to solely rely on your productivity for your sense of value. And you don't know how to access your value for your presence. Okay. So the cost is that you will settle because you don't know the alternative. You don't know any other way than the hunter. When you <clears throat> equate your value solely with your productivity, I'm not saying it's an either or thing. It's a, there's human doing and human being. And when you expand the human being, then you can access a natural abundance. You don't have to Doing is very important and it's very necessary, but it's not the only skill. There's doing skills and being skills. And a lot of us over-rely on doing, malnourished in the being. This is where the thriving generously comes from. Again, comments or questions for those who are um, with me today. <clears throat> so when you equate your value solely with your productivity, it means there is no room for your, your humanity and it will cost you dearly. Remember, the hunter or the highly productive person does better because they're able to be more efficient when they are needless. 
when they don't have feelings. There's no room for feelings. There's no room for vulnerability. There's no room for needs. There's no room for being human because the, all of that interferes with your productivity. There's no room for it. So how do you settle? Because your value, because you value your productivity over your presence, you will settle for being a high achiever even if your happiness remains malnourished. I don't know what that labeling is. Okay. <clears throat> you will settle for a life where your feelings, needs, and wants are neglected, rejected, or shamed. So the shaming part is when we grew up as products of our environment, where there was no room for our feelings, there was no nurturing, no validation, or we got mixed messages, things like go to your room, um, don't cry, um, get over it, tough it out, things like that, right? That creates an internalized shaming for our very humanity, our feelings. So you will settle for a life where your feelings, needs, and wants are neglected, rejected, and shamed. From the world of thriving and fulfillment, that is incredibly unfulfilling. It's downright painful because you don't achieve fulfilled, you feel fulfilled. You will settle for feeling disempowered regarding how to care for your loneliness and your isolation because you won't know how to meet your human need for connection and support. Connection and support is human. It's part of your humanity. But when this goes malnourished, then we just don't know how to even meet that need, let alone be okay with the fact that we actually feel lonely and feel isolated. And how do I ask for support? You will <clears throat> settle for your limits. In other words, we, we all have goals and dreams and wishes and aspirations. And ultimately, eventually, every one of us will hit some sort of upper limit. That's the name of my company, my business, surpass your limits, all right? So you will settle for this. You will go as far as you can on your own. You will settle for this because you can only go so far on your own, the efficient uh, hunter, right? And you'll regard your natural human need for support as a sign that you're incapable. So a lot of times what happens is, is we feel incapable, we, we believe we're incapable, we're hitting our upper limit, but we have all these beliefs. Remember that little quiz we took about what do you believe? We have all these beliefs about, about what it means to be capable. And we don't realize that you can be vulnerable and be capable. You can need support and be capable. You can make mistakes and be capable. You can feel insecure and be capable. The piece though, is you have to be willing to allow your humanity to be part of how you define and express your capability. So here is the small shift that brings big abundance. And remember, the shifts are a change in point of view, okay? What you're believing. Why? Back to the beginning of this training, your consciousness creates your reality. And the reality that you create is not based on what you focus on, but how you relate to everything. When you relate to yourself from a place that's holistic, the doing and the being, that all of you is valued, wanted, cherished, and worthy, then life rises up to meet you. Ah, she can be vulnerable. She can be tired today and she can still receive. She doesn't have to be in hunter mode, but you have to nurture that consciousness in order to receive it into your life. So the shift that brings in big abundance is to shift from overvaluing your doing skills because it's more comfortable and familiar based on being a product of your environment that's what you grew up with. That's what you experienced. That's what's familiar. That's your go-to. So to shift from overvaluing your doing skills because it's more comfortable and familiar and start nurturing the untapped power of your being skills. That means <clears throat> get curious about it. 
Be willing to invest time, energy, yes, money in developing your being skills. This is what allows you to shift out of surviving, like the hunter who survives from meal to meal, right? To thriving like the majestic tree, flourishing like the majestic tree, who can simply be and access the natural abundance that life is always providing just by being, right? That's the shift. And the non-negotiable requirement to stop settling. So this is, if you really want to stop settling for less, if you really want to tap into thriving, this is, you have to do this. This, you just can't not do this because it is the missing piece. So the non-negotiable requirement to stop settling is you must stop equating your value solely with your productivity and start getting curious about how to embody, experience, and express the power and value of your presence. <clears throat> now, let me tell you something as somebody, I've been doing this as a coach now, uh, learning these points, these principles, practicing them, teaching them, working with clients around them. This is not more work. I know when you hear new ideas, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do. I don't know what to, I don't, I don't know the answers. I don't understand this. I got to learn this. That's the beauty of this. Okay. With all of my programs, the Thrive Generously program, this program, what, as you get into playing with this, these are ways of being, not more to do, not more to do. Let's see. Hello. Welcome. Okay. So these principles are simple. They are easy. Are they familiar? Not so much. So there's going to be a level of unfamiliarity. But when you start practicing these awareness practices, they're all in consciousness, right? That's what the tree does. It's a being. It just opens up through awareness and things start to show up. So stop equating your value solely with your productivity. Start getting curious about how to embody, experience, and express the power and value of your presence. And it can be simple. All it requires is showing up. And we talked about that in reason number one, space to be, show up with you, being you, not doing more, being. <clears throat> so this brings us to missing asset number three, which is Support, support, support is an asset. It is not a sign of weakness. It is not, the need for support is not a sign that you are incapable, that um, you are, um, well, basically that's the, the message for today. The need for support, the human requirement for support in order to flourish is that missing asset because we have again incorrect information so for your for your awareness for your practice for your exploration claim support as a non-negotiable requirement in your life start to see support the need for it and the requirement of it as a sign of strength, of capability. Now, here's the, here's the thing that a lot of people don't think about. Some of the most capable, productive, successful, fulfilled people in life are this way because they have support, because they have support in their family, because they have a supportive spouse, um, because they, they have made it a point to access support. They're parts of groups or communities or things like that, okay? Now, some of us have it naturally, and some of us have to take this on as a commitment. I'll just tell you a quick story. So I was one of these people, right? I thought that I was supposed to figure it all myself and prove myself and show how capable I was. And, you know, it was product of my environment, right? And back in 1989, I did a women's empowerment uh, weekend and I learned a lot. And then I joined a group for support. And I didn't really know why I was doing it. The only reason I knew was what I had been doing up until that point all by myself was not getting me the results I wanted. So it's kind of like 
I guess I should try something new. So in this group, they told us to come up with some goals so that then we could ask for and receive support. And I was so aware in that moment that my thought was, well, I'll come up with my goals, but I don't really need your support because I just, I set my goals and I make them happen by myself anyway. Thank you very much. And it didn't take long after I received some support since I was in this environment where I learned that, yeah, you can get results on your own, but it can only take you so far. That will be your upper limit. And it's a lot harder. So what I learned was when I started um, unshaming myself around needing support, wanting support, valuing support, discovering what was possible, it was the difference between walking towards my dreams like the hunter versus flying towards my dreams because support was the wind beneath my wings. So those who are very fulfilled and successful in life, it's because support is a part of the equation. You might not see it because they might look like a rock star, but support is a non-negotiable, whether they take it on or it's just given. Okay, so with that, your presence practice is this. Presence meaning practice being aware. And through that awareness, when you're feeling like I need to be capable and I should do it on my own, stop, notice, and practice this affirmation. This is like the tree being an invitation all day long, open and receptive. I am willing to see all of the ways that support is available to me. I am willing to see all of the ways that support is available to me. Just start opening your awareness to support. You can also say this affirmation. I am willing to see how asking for and receiving support is a sign of strength and power. So try those on for size, just in your awareness. Notice when you're thinking I should do it all myself or you're feeling incapable. Start opening up to the power of support that life will provide for you. And the writing prompts, if you'd like to go deeper and contemplate and keep expanding your awareness is this. Think about, write about where in my life have I been settling for going without support? What are my beliefs and fears about asking for and receiving support? And finally, where did these messages come from? Really start unpacking where you got these ideas from. So that will be all available to you. The slides are going to be at um, the, uh, the hub for all of these recordings. And <clears throat> I invite you to check out some real live um, case studies with real world resort, resorts, results at surpassyourlimits.com, five reasons. You'll see that video here. There's lots of examples. Every single person that you'll see in this video um, has uh, real world results and experiences of thriving and flourishing because they allow themselves to access more support for their humanity, for their presence versus continuing to overvalue productivity. And there's a particular person, I wanted to put this in the slide, but I ran out of time. You will see um, a gentleman, Reverend BK. He um, is came to me, we started working together. He was um, really suffering from a whole lot of overdoing. He's a very accomplished man, a community leader, a peace activist, um, was so overdoing and it was really just exhausting him and just didn't know how to say no to it because he was so conditioned to get his sense of value from that. So it was just this machine of just doing, 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 doing. And what he desperately wanted was to be able to relax more, have more space in his life, to tap into the power of being, to unwind from all of that conditioning of getting his value from all of the doing and, 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 uh, uh, meeting other people's needs and other people's demands constantly around the clock, right? So from an inner level, he wanted to be, but even more than that, or just as important as that, he wanted to know he'd be taken care of if he stopped doing, that he could set boundaries 
and start nurturing his passions. And he tells the story about the thing he wanted to do the most is to write and to connect with his joys, like playing the flute and having more space in his life and really, you know, producing this book that he had inside of him. And so he showed up to one of our Q&A sessions to report after practicing these principles and showing up for himself that he achieved bestselling stat bestseller status for his book on multiple lists. He was going to visit his uh, son in France and go traveling there and do some more writing. He manifested an inflow of money just by showing up and being and standing in his value. So all of this came from his being practices and valuing that instead of more, more, more doing, doing, doing without actually stopping to be open to this possibility. And that's just one example. So I invite you to check that out and be inspired by what's possible for you. Now, if you've been following along with our five missing assets, this is where you can grab that handout and, and I'll have it available for you. This is where we put in asset number three. When you don't believe you're capable, claim support. Claim support to nurture your natural capabilities and bring that out more fully, just like the tree gets nurtured and brings out more fully the power of its presence. So we're wrapping up now. Here are your next steps. We've got two more reasons we're going to cover, reason number four and reason number five. So come back next Friday, 12 noon, if you'd like to join me live. Post your questions and comments uh, here. After the replay, you can send in your questions at surpassyourlimits.com forward slash questions. Let me check a quick look. Feel free to post for those of you who are here live with any questions before we wrap up for today. And if you'd like to learn more about how to integrate what we're talking about in this training into your life, please consider joining me at the Thrive Generously program. It starts January 31st. Live and lead from your natural abundance, your natural abundance through the power of these presence practices and principles. This is an experiential program. This is not more doing, right? This isn't something that's going to require hard work. It's the opposite. It's about training your awareness, expanding your awareness, practicing the five assets with the other students. Um, I do make sure that the people who join this program are a match for this. And so I have one-on-one -on -one conversations unless I already know you. So it's by invitation or application only. So just contact me and I can send you the information and we can talk about what your next steps are and if it's a match for you. All right. So let's see any other questions. All right. Well, thank you for being here. I love teaching this stuff and uh, watch for the emails if you're on my email list. DM me, post com comments. I'm here to be of service. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you on Friday. Bye everybody.